it is in this vein that we must once again register our deep concern over the bloody violence which in recent months have been visited on the people of South Africa. The massacre in Boapatong and even more recently in Siskai have today become a metaphor of the struggle against apartheid as much as Soweto was decades ago. How many more lives have to be lost? How many more families must bite the bitter fruit of violence before the South African government realizes that the campaign of terror being waged by its agents merely increases the skepticism over its real intentions? For the South African government to continue receiving the cautious approval of the international community for its agenda of political reform of its society, The African politics is famously known with having other members leading the African political world. Research will show that in Africa, 90% of the leaders are over 65 years of age, leaving no room for the young blood to take part in the African political affairs. At the age of 24, John Cecil Rhodes, who came to Africa to seek treatment for his sickness at the age of 17, decided to devote his life in the defense and extension of the British Empire a decision that he thought a worthy one because Cecil Rhodes believed that the British Empire stands for the protection of all the inhabitants of the country in life, liberty, property, fair play and happiness. Great inspirational male figure in the great British Empire. By the way, if someone knows what made Britain great, meet me in the comment section and teach me something new. Yes, great inspirational male figure indeed to the young people of Great Britain. But what about Africa? Did history recorded one such individual who headed an African state at a young age? Well, today in this feature, we are bringing to you an ex-military leader who served as the head of an African state from 1992 to 1996, becoming the world's youngest head of state in 1992 after seizing power three days after his 25th birthday. He was the leading member in a group of six young soldiers who overthrew their president in the 1992 coup d'etat and established a military junta that ruled the country for years. Who is this man that I am talking about? Find out from this video. Very inspiring indeed to all young blacks who wish to govern their countries one day to bring about the much needed change, the change that Africans are yearning. I am the African teacher on African Eyes Media and if you haven't yet subscribed, please do so and be part of this journey, the journey in search for knowledge. Valentine Esigrabo Mervyn Stresser was born on 26 April 1967 in Freetown, the capital of Sierra Leone, to parents from the Creole ethnic group. At the time of Stresser's birth, Sir Albert Magai was the Prime Minister of Sierra Leone when the country was a parliamentary government. Stresser grew up in the neighborhood of Aran Town in the extreme east end of Freetown. Stresser completed his secondary 
secondary education at the Sierra Leone Grammar School in Freetown and graduate in 1985 at the age of 18. While in secondary school, Stresser was a gifted student in math and chemistry. On graduation from secondary school in 1985, he enlisted in the Republic of Sierra Leone military forces at the age of 18 during the government of President Siaka Stevens and was deployed for military training as a cadet officer at the Banguema Military Training Academy in Banguema, a town located just outside Freetown. After his training, he was commissioned into the Sierra Leone Army at the young age of 19 and was posted to a military barracks in Daru, Kairahau district in the eastern Sierra Leone. The revolutionary United Front RUF led by Ford de Sacco began their first attack on 25th March 1991 in Buedu villages in Kararahu district. Stresser and other soldiers who were already in the military barracks in Kararahu were sent to command and route the rebellion against the RUF. Before President Moma was removed by his successor, Valentine Stresser fought against the Liberian invasion in Sierra Leone, particularly in the east and south of Sierra Leone. Stresser in his fight had to go up against domestic rebels, also known as the Sobels. President Momo's presidency was not long-lasting because he denied the demands of the people of Sierra Leone at the time of his regime, wanted a more cooperative political system, and thought Momo provided nothing different than his predecessor. During Stresser's time at the war front in the Kairahahu district against the RUF, the government of Sierra Leone, led by President Joseph Saud Momo hardly supplied enough boots to the soldiers and the necessary military equipment to help fortify Stresser and his fellow soldiers in the war against the RUF. The soldiers never received their salaries on time and their welfare was hardly at the top of the government's list of priorities. After many appeals, warnings and threats, the young soldiers decided to march down in their combat from Kalialahu to the state house in Freetown on 29th April 1992 to protest about their setbacks in pursuing the war, demanding their outstanding salaries. The group of soldiers was led by Stresser himself and his two best friends and fellow soldiers, Sergeant Solomon Musa and Captain Sar Sunday. After many appeals, warnings or threats, the young soldiers decided to march down in their combat from Kairarahu to the State House in Freetown on 29th April 1992 to protest about their setbacks in pursuing suing the war, demanding their outstanding salaries. The group of soldiers was led by Stresser himself and his two best friends and fellow soldiers, Sergeant Solomon Musa and Captain Sahri Sunday. The appearance of the soldiers in the capital city forced President Momo to flee the country and he went into exile in Conakry, Guinea. This power vacuum motivated Stresser and his men to seize power, forming the NPRC with Stresser as its leader leader and the head of state of the country. Stresser became the youngest head of state in the world at just 25 years old. After becoming president, Stresser set about implementing big plans to establish a functioning democracy in Sierra Leone. Soldiers organized a cleanup campaign to clear the streets of mountains of trash and many of them participated in the campaign. The economy was improving with gas and electricity readily available once again. Ambulances which had all vanished from the capital Freetown were imported and put to use again. Optimistic once more, young people spread murals of inspiring slogans and national heroes across downtown Freetown. There was talk of a long-awaited revolution finally blooming. In January 1996, after nearly four years in power, Stresser was outstayed in another military coup, but this time it was his own NPRC members who were not satisfied with his hand of the peace process. The coup was led by his deputy brigadier general Julius Mada Bayo along with Colonel Tom Numa and Captain Komba Monde. 
Bayo quickly rose as the leader of the coup with the support of Numa and Monde and took over as head of state of Sierra Leone. Following his overthrow, Stresser was given a fellowship by the UN to study law at the University of Warwick in Coventry, England, but stopped his studies after 18 months. In the year 2000, Stresser's application for Aslam in England was rejected. He then left for the Gambia only to be denied entry. He eventually returned to Sierra Leone where he lived in Grafton, east of Freetown and worked at the ICT Institute providing computer skills for youths. In January 2019, he fell gravely ill and was flown to Ghana for treatment. His left leg was partially amputated due to the peripheral artery disease. After undergoing rehabilitation, he returned to Sierra Leone in July 2021 and received an apartment from President Bayo. Amadou Makalo Koyita, a member of the opposition or People's Congress, later arranged that the government was keeping Stresser under house arrest. Despite the fact that Valentine Stresser's reign did not end well, he will always be recognized as Africa's youngest president who ruled Sierra Leone from 1992 to 1996 at the age of 25. Great inspiration indeed to the young aspiring African leaders.